in an earthly kingdom and with an earthly king, the people fight for the king. In a heavenly kingdom, the king fights for the people. <laughs> In a heavenly kingdom, the king serves the servants. Isn't that amazing? That's why Jesus had to come. Because God is a servant at heart. Stripped himself of glory and came down here and took on the form of a man to touch you, to redeem you, to walk in the places and the spaces that you would walk in so that you would know no matter how crazy it gets, he's been there. Mm. Already gone ahead of you and made your crooked path straight. That's why Hebrews chapter 12 talks about running the race that has been set before you. Looking unto who? There you go. You need to read a little more. Looking unto Jesus, the author. I can't, we got to flow today. The author and the finisher of our faith that which we're believing in. So he says, Hebrews 12, he says, since we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. All of us right now, I'm in the message, I didn't mean to me, but anyway, just a little bit. All of us have been set upon a race your life is a race. We'll talk about it later. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. So, I'm looking at the one who started my race at the finish line. Which means I'm going to make it. Can't you see Jesus cheering you, egging you on? I already went ahead of you. I know it's tough. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But I made a way. I made a way. Oh boy. It's going to be one of those Sundays I see. Anybody glad to be here? Yeah. Glad to be in God's house. Now. I've got to steward this moment. I got to, I, I would never rob you of the what and the how as it pertains to why God drew you here by me locking into a rigid structure. And I can tell you right now that is extremely uncomfortable for me because I want to do it like this and put this here and that's supposed to go there and this and then we're good. But, but, but I love you too much not to participate in the flow of the Spirit. So please pardon me in advance if it lacks the typical Sunday morning structure. But God loves you too much and I don't want to miss it and, and I, I'm really, I'm, 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 I'm sensitive about you. Because the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. You, you know what I mean? So please, let me be awkward for a minute. I promise the intention is good. I just don't want to miss anything. You're too important. You're too valuable. And I'll tell you right now, if you're attracted to this movement, because there are a million places to go, and we love all of them and encourage and, and celebrate all of them, but there are a million places to go. But I'll tell you one thing about this movement. This movement attracts called people. Not random people, but people who have something in them 
that the Holy Spirit is constantly tugging and pulling on. I know it. It just is what it is. It's not a knock or slam on anybody else. It's just the truth. In other words, what I'm trying to get you to understand is I know who you are. And I think that God gives me and the leaders of this church food for you because you're different. Go on and have a seat for a second. Let's just get into it. You're, you're different. You're watching via live stream. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm normally supposed to greet you right here, but... But I just want to say a few words, and then it's going to be a little different today. We pray we'll be out. Maybe we'll even be out, you know, by 4.30 today. You know, who, who knows how this thing will play out. But I just got to, I got to go with it. I got to go with it. Um, you're, when you're called, your life is different. When, when deep is constantly calling to deep. When, when the deep God calls on the deep that God has placed on the inside of you, that makes life very interesting. And really there's no escaping what you have to walk through and deal with and endure and overcome, there is no way around it. I was at the gym a few weeks back. Um, it might be difficult to tell. <laughs> Anytime you see me wearing oversized stuff, just know that I have been traveling and out of my rhythm. Just, okay, just in case you wonder. But anyway, I, I was at the gym a few weeks ago and you know I don't know like what we're gonna do at the gym I just know it's gonna be very difficult and I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna die <laughs> for that one hour that we're together um, I my, my gym my coach is an athlete and they train elite athletes and uh, somehow they think that I am one of them and I, I just <laughs> You know, we just, we, we haven't made that connection yet. But this one particular time I was in the gym and it was getting ready to get real hard. Like my trainer, my coach, he warms me up a little bit. And even the warm up is hard. <laughs> so he warms me up and then he starts showing me the next three exercises we're getting ready to do. And I almost died. And he's like, PT, all right, yeah, you ready to go? And there was a part of me, see, I had an opportunity at that moment to throw out a whole bunch of excuses. You know, my shoulder's been bothering me <laughs> right over in here. <laughs> There's that moment when you're at the gym and when you're training or just in life, but, but in this context, I was at the gym. And there's this moment, and I call it like the breaking point. And it's when either... You know, it's very, very difficult. And you have a decision to make. Either you can break down or you can break through. And all the voices in that moment, all the voices in that moment are saying, break down. You're human. Don't push yourself so hard. You know, I mean, just, oh, my God, just the, the prolific excuse making that happens in your head at that moment. Looking at your phone. Oh, I got to close this deal or whatever it is. But there's this moment. This very pivotal moment where you have to make a decision. Maybe for you, if you're in the gym, you know, maybe, you know, you got five more reps and you feel like you ain't got no more left in you. That, that somebody, that struck a nerve right over there to my left. He's asking, she's asking, they're asking for five more. And you feel like it took everything that you had to give it the five that you gave. And the way that the coach is asking, it, it ain't like he's letting you out of it. He wants his five more. And you can either trust the coach's voice and press in in that breaking moment or you can break down. And this crazy thing happened to me when I was in that scenario. It's a crazy thing. It's never happened to me before. 
this phrase arose in my spirit that has changed my life. And it was in that particular moment where the pressure was on and I had the opportunity to take the easy way out or to dig in and get it done. This phrase arose in my spirit and that phrase was, it's hard to be you. And I said, oh, oh. it's hard to be you. And there was something in that moment that gave me the strength to, watch this, become the person that breaks through and doesn't break down. You hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> I love this church. <laughs> what I came to tell you is that it's hard to be you. In other words, hard is actually normal for you. I, I, I got I to say this. I got to say that. Um, the you that you are becoming requires hard. Because the lesser you will stay put in easy. Can, can, I, can I just take, I'm, I'm just gonna take, just take my time for I'm, I'm out here. In, in other words, in order to be you, it must be hard. Because the real you is beyond the perceived you. The real you is more than the perceived you. I'll give you an example. God tells Jeremiah, one of my favorite passages, Jeremiah chapter 1, read verses 4 all the way through Revelation. Jeremiah 1, read the whole book, you'll find it. But he says, God says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations, right? Jeremiah responds, oh, no, 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 no. Jeremiah says, first of all, behold, I am a child. <laughs> and, I, and I cannot speak. Now, he is arguing against the very identity that the one who created him assigned to him. Which means that you have two identities. Your present perceived identity and your actual identity. And you get to your actual identity by navigating hard disciplines. Oh, God, I, I'm trying, I'm trying. No, 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 it, 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 it changed my life. Bring, bring my notes and stuff up here just in case I want to reference them. <laughs> it changed my life. It's hard to be you. In other words, it's going to cost to be you. And there's no way around it. Because, watch this, Romans 8, we've talked about it before. God says that all of creation is eagerly waiting for the revealing of of the children of God. Oh, got it. In other words, the earth, the world, the universe won't get what it needs until you become you. You hear what I'm saying? You are a big deal. You are a big deal. But the reality of it is, we will live in less if we don't normalize hard so what happens is when things get hard we believe that it is above us it's not above you it's because of you and so in that moment I'm at the gym 
in that moment, that, that voice came and it says, yeah, I know it's hard, but it's hard to be you. And when I embraced, oh God, I can't wait to minister. When I embraced hard, I became a different person. Athletes know what I'm talking about, man. You, you get to this moment where it's almost like you black out. Because if you allow your mind to convince you that this heart is bigger than you, you'll quit. But if you lean into it and you begin to suspend your thinking and allow your real capabilities to stand up in that moment, you will go further than you ever thought you can go. And this is what makes the trainer important. Because the trainer is studying potential. A good trainer doesn't let you tell them what you want to do. A good trainer studies you, studies your movement, studies your posture, takes notes about where you were last week, and stretches you. They study your body. They do all sorts of tests and all sorts of measurement because what they're trying to gauge is your potential because it's not about who you think you are, it's who they know you can be. And they push you by putting you in circumstances and situations that are beyond the you that you think you are so that the you that you truly are can emerge. Now, why am I talking about this? Somebody came for the first time and hi, first time guest. How you doing? God bless you. Love you. And the person that brought you here is saying he is so much, he's usually much more positive than this. I don't, you came on the wrong day. This is, no, no, th there's a reason why, I mean, what motivational speaker has a message called it's hard being you? I ain't a motivational speaker. The reason why, family, this message is important is because we're moving into an era of endurance. An era of endurance. And watch this. And do you know how endurance is produced? <laughs> she sighed very deeply <laughs> for all of us. I endurance, watch this. You're not born with endurance. Hey. I I watch this. Endurance is not a spiritual gift. I can't lay my hands on you and give you endurance. Spirit of endurance, ratabo, fall upon him. I receive it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't work like that. That's not what the Bible says. You know what gets you to endurance? Trials. I promise you, he's much more positive than I'm telling you. I promise you. No. Trials. Romans 5, study when you get a chance. Stop. Trials. Many trials produce endurance. And one of the things that I love about endurance is endurance brings you to a place where low-level things don't matter. There, there's something very purifying about endurance. You go through enough stuff <laughs> and things all of a sudden do not matter. Everybody's freaking out about it and you're just, just walking through it. Because that's who you're called to be. There's this pastor scripture study. when you get a chance. It's Proverbs 24 and 10. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So right now, in this era of endurance, and I'll talk about that, God is building your muscles. And just like when you're in the gym and you feel like you are going to literally die. <laughs> Some of you may feel that way right now. Some in this room right now, 
and you are facing things that are disfiguring you. What do you mean? I mean, these things are literally changing the form and the shape of your life. If that's you, holler at me real quick. Dude. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to describe it. It's literally, and it's frustrating because I wanted more from where I was last time. I did want more. I prayed for more. But if I'm honest, I don't recognize this. And I know I prayed for more, but I would rather have the familiarity of that last place that I was in when I was praying for more because it may not be more, but at least I know it. At least that that resonated. At least, at least, I know where my feet are. At least I know where the ground is. At least I, I recognize me. But now I'm having to walk through something or things or whatever, trial. However, God, see, God is the master potter. He knows what to do, when, and how. And now that I'm walking through this, I am deformed. D formed. I prayed for more, which meant that I prayed for a new formation. But the process, you don't go from formation to formation. You go from formation to deformation to new formation. And the beauty of the process and the most potent and powerful and transformative part of the process is the deformation process. Because it teaches you how to trust God when you feel formless. It breaks you out of this perspective about God that says that I am only being blessed when things are going my way. Or God's hand is only on me when I feel favor, when I feel like I'm standing on the top of the mountain, when I feel like all the doors are opening for me, when I feel like my bank account is swelling. That is when God's hand is on me. No, usually that's after God's hand was on you. We, we try to reduce life and God and God's interactions with us down to certain very, very carnal, and if I might just say it, weak circumstantial characteristics. When I know where everything is, when I can see my way around, and God says no. Sometimes when you can't see me working without you, outside of you, it is because I am working. God, where are you? I can't see you. I don't see you in my bank account. I don't see you in my relationship. I don't see you in my career. God, where are you? And God is saying, I'm closer than you think. I'm in here. Developing your insides because you become you not from the outside in, but from the inside out. This era of endurance family, I hate to put this type of pressure on you, but I got to tell you the truth. You are all God has got. You're all he's got. God doesn't have another you. There's just not another you coming. You're alive in this generation, in this time, called in church 
after you just lost an hour of sleep. <laughs> and I've I, I got, I'm, I'm got some rebuking to do because I'm tired of that now, dang it. <laughs> I don't mind when we fall back. <laughs> I digress. God doesn't have another you. You're it. And when God sees you, God only sees what he formed. So God is not going to alter the mold according to your perspective. Who you are is settled. And so now God has to take you on the journey to becoming it. Because all of creation, that's Romans 8, study that too. All of creation is with earnest expectation, eagerly awaiting your revealing. If it is your revealing, that means that you have not arrived yet. And this is what the Apostle Paul was talking about more to study in Philippians chapter 3 when he says, after a great, illustrious career in ministry, churches planted, all that kind of stuff. He says, I have not attained yet. He says, I have not arrived. He says, but this, he, no, he says something else. He said, I'm trying to apprehend what Christ has apprehended me for. He was after him. He says, so here's what I do. Even though I've done all these incredible things, here's what he says. He says, I forget those things that are behind. Study it, Philippians 3, 10, the Revelation, okay? He says, forgetting those things that are behind. Watch this. When we look at that, we think of all bad things. No, no, no. He's talking about previous versions of himself. He was not satisfied with who he was because he knew that as long as he had breath, that there was a greater version of himself in front of him. And then in that same context, a few verses earlier, he says something crazy. And he talks about having fellowship with Christ's sufferings. Oh, you don't hear this preached. You don't, you don't. I, I, he said, I, I want to have, in the context of that, Sammy, in the context of, of going from level to level, forgetting what's behind, he says, I want to have fellowship with Christ's sufferings. Who's, who prayed that? Hey, Jesus, man, I just feel real spiritual today. <laughs> just feel real spiritual. And I just, you know, I just want, I, I want to have Watch this. Not just I want to know your sufferings. I want to have fellowship. Oh, you're not coming back. You're not coming back. That's all right. <laughs> but he didn't want to have fellowship with Christ's sufferings for suffering's sake. He understood that the process to becoming... Yeah. It's hard to be you. Are we tracking? The revelation that it is normal for life to be hard in and of itself is liberating. Not that you want it to be hard and not that you go and pursue hard. Don't go out and run out in front of the street from a bus saying, no, that, no. That's not what I'm talking about. It is recognizing that when you are on the path to purpose, and you're doing everything that you know to do. It is not God cursing you when things all of a sudden get hard. It is God's process of producing what you cannot produce within yourself. And that is endurance. Now I'm going to tell you why this is important. And we'd we be done. About two more hours. We're finished here. Okay. I'll tell you why this is important. It's because the world is changing. 
And sometimes we're, we're too distracted to realize how much it is changing. And I'm going to be honest with you right now, things are going to get harder. And my passion, if you know me, you've been around me for any length of time, you know that my mission and my mandate is to make sure you're ready. The mandate of this church has always been to build big people, point blank, period. And there's some incredible things that we have in the work that I'll be talking about in the next few months that will do that in a way that has never been seen before in our context, and I'm excited about it. But I want you to be ready. I want you to have, there's a Greek word for endurance in the scripture, and it's the Greek word hypomone, and it literally means to abide under. It's a beautiful word. It talks about how tribulation produces the ability to abide under. I don't want when the adversity hits for you to faint. In fact, when everybody is fainting around you, I want you to rise up and be the leader. that the world is crying out for. See, I believe, you know how the scriptures say that we're the heads and not the tail? I believe what's gonna happen in the future, and I believe this is prophetic, I've never even sensed this before until this very moment that I'm here with you. I believe that one of the ways that you're gonna become a leader is how you don't faint when stuff starts shaking. I feel that right there. In fact, you're being conditioned right now through your difficulty, through you still having to build while being broken, you're being conditioned in such a way that watch this, when everything is crumbling around you and people who do not know your God all of a sudden start fainting, not only are you going to stand up, that's actually when you're going to begin to thrive because people are going to begin to start looking at you and looking to you because while everybody was partying and hanging, you were going through difficulty. I feel that right there. You've been comparing yourself to people that are partying, people that are hanging, and you going through and you're struggling and trying to make it but what you don't realize is that a time is coming and it's already here if I might add where things are going to start shaking and you were praying going through but God was developing something on the inside of you while they were partying you were praying while you were wishing that you had that life God was developing you from the inside out and there's going to be a shift I feel it. There's going to be a shift. And the last are going to be first. And the first last. It's hard to be you. It's supposed to because you're called. You're called. You say, why me? And you know what the answer to that question is. Why not you? You're going to have to endure. You're going to have to maintain who you are through blows that come out of nowhere. Hear me clearly. There are going to be so many things that are thrown your way to try to throw you off course. So many things. And you've got to be locked in. I want to go a little practical real quick. We're coming into an election season. Or we're in an election season. But we haven't seen the ugly yet. It's coming. It's coming. And you can't get distracted. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter who wins. I'm taking you higher, taking you higher. I'm not saying don't vote. Vote, absolutely. But vote knowing that it doesn't matter who wins. It matters that you vote, but it doesn't matter who wins. Because here is the truth. Read Romans 13. There's no authority that doesn't come from God. In other words, God, if there's authority that's put in place, God allows it. Not saying that he endorses it or endorses the behavior or the leadership or the lack thereof. 
but in God's process of causing all things to work together for good, he allows it. So I just vote and I, and I move out of it. And watch this, practical now, don't waste energy fighting and arguing over things that are not significant as a, to your calling and your purpose. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm just talking about don't, don't, be, don't take the bait is what I'm saying. I don't want to spend too much time there, but don't take the bait. You're going to have to endure seeing things, hearing things, because there's an assignment for your life. There's a mission, and you got to stay pure. You got to stay pure. Okay, so I want to do something real quick. I had three pages of notes, but that's not what we're doing today. I want to, I want to, I want to pray for some people that when you heard, like, it, it's hard to be you, man, it just resonated really deeply. And not only is it hard, it just seems like it's getting harder. I want to pray your strength. I want to pray for you. I want to assure you, though, it's because you're called. There's a narrow way. You know, the Bible says two things. It says, well, it's a lot of things. But it says many are called, few are chosen, right? Well, there's another place where it talks about many and few. It's when it talks about the broad way versus the narrow way. He says there's a broad road and there's a narrow road. Many are on the broad, few are on the narrow. So I believe that you're hearing this not simply because you're called, but you're chosen. Mm. Mm. I came to talk to who you really are. You're chosen. And when you're chosen, you can't move like everybody else. It won't work. You have tried it. Some of you have tried to get in trouble and couldn't even find trouble. You ain't got to admit it. You're frustrated. I'm tired, God. Go looking for trouble. Any other time, trouble is everywhere. But you're too chosen. <laughs> you ain't got to admit it. I, I know. When you're chosen, it's crazy. And ultimately, God will allow. It says, that road is narrow. He'll allow you to feel squeeze and tight because your path is not random. It's a very specific and particular journey. And you've got to be at the right place at the right time with the right people and the right attitude. Come on, somebody. And the right spirit. All these things have to come together and align so that everything that God envisions when he sees you is realized. And you know how that, hap that process happens? By you being put in a hard place. All right. I'm just trying to figure this thing out. I told you it's going to be a little unorthodox. I love you too much. Here's the good news. Somebody said, finally. <laughs> Here's the good news. I go in that, that gym every day, four days a week, five days a week, and it is all out hell for an hour. And I have to tell myself, uh, you know, I, I got to keep telling myself, it's hard to be you. It's supposed to be hard. <laughs> you're supposed to feel like you're about to drop dead. You know? <laughs> but then it's over, and there's a reprieve. I want somebody to know that a reprieve is coming. It's not going to always be hard. They're going to, a reprieve is coming. And in that reprieve, not only is there rest, watch this, but there are gains. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit on that. God's not going to ever let you fight a battle where there is no spoil. I feel that right there. In fact, if you're going through something, stand up real quick. I want to pray. I want to unlock something real quick. 
That's, that's about all of you. Lord Jesus, I'm in the right room. I want to prophesy over you right now. One, there will be glory after this. There will be glory after this. There will be glory. There will be glory. There will be glory. There will be glory, there will be glory after this. As God leads you into uncomfortable and awkward spaces, uncomfortable, awkward, and unfamiliar spaces, the only reason why God would lead you in that particular way, whether it be difficulty, unseen, whatever, he would not lead you there if there were not glory there. God knows where the glory is. God knows where the wells are. God knows where the value is. Are you hearing me? He leads me. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. So one, there will be glory after this. That's why you have to endure. That's why you can't turn around because it's uncomfortable. Don't turn around. Don't go back. Glory is not behind you. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead is in front of you. But you got to press toward the mark. That's one. Two, there will be spoil. Glory has to do with what God does in you. Okay? So all of that endurance, all of that, that self-talk, all of that that God spoke to me about, it's hard to be you and all that kind of stuff. That was inner, that those were inner disciplines. That was inner development. But when I left the gym, I had outer gains. So there will be spoil. What is spoil? Spoil is what the victors got when they overcame the battle. Feel the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, I feel it. I hear him saying, it's going to be worth it. That's why you got to go through it. Don't turn around. It's going to be worth it. I've never left the gym and thought that wasn't worth it. I thought it was hard, but it was worth it. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name for your sons and daughters in this room. Not just called, but chosen. God. Man, I'm laying hands on each of you. I'm doing the spirit. You do it. And I just pray, Lord God, that your hand would rest upon each one and that it would strengthen them. Hallelujah. God, the apostle Paul talked about imparting gifts that establish and I'm praying in the name of Jesus there's some in this room right now where their foot almost slipped and they were almost getting ready to be uprooted from the place and space that you preordained because it was hard but I pray right now in the name of Jesus not only will they not be uprooted but that they will be established God and their roots would go down causing them to become like trees planted in the river of water that bring forth fruit in every season and that their leaf will not wither and whatever they do shall prosper I speak it I decree it it is so Holy Spirit I pray right now that you would just begin to fill your sons and daughters up Fill your children right now to the overflow. Edify them. Build them. I shall build them. Fill them. They are that generation. A royal priesthood. And in the name of Jesus, we cast down every high thing, every argument, every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. God, you've given us knowledge. Hallelujah. We're adding to our faith, as Peter said, knowledge. Hallelujah. And I pray, Lord God, that as we walk through these hard places, we will know we're not walking alone. You are 
with us, ahead of us, and behind us. You are covering us. You've gone ahead of us, and you have dealt with every enemy. I feel that right there. Yeah, the giants are in the land. Yeah, the difficulty is in the past. But the land has already been given to me. And all I got to do is walk through it. Hallelujah. All I got to do is put my foot down in the water. And those waters are going to part. And I'm going to walk over on dry land. Because it was written. My success was written. My victory was written. My spoil was written. My inheritance is written. It's written. And when something is written, the only way that you don't get it is if you quit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. You're it. I'm sorry. Sorry, you chosen. Had to be you. That's why you're still here. That's why you went through what you went through, but you're still here. That's why you went through what you went through, but you didn't lose your not your mind. That's why you're still here. Because you're chosen. And God's not finished with you yet. And I think for some of you, when you come to this hard place, it's actually gonna be like you getting started. Hallelujah. It's hard to be you. It's supposed to be. God's calling you to another level of discipline. You can't be you if you're not disciplined. Every single day, this is not self-grandizing, but I'm gonna tell you, in addition to working out and all that kind of stuff, every single day, I have an I am Torre identity statement. Every day I remind myself who I am. You have to be radically disciplined about who you tell yourself you are every single day. Are you hearing me? And be specific. Don't just put, I'm a child of God. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means I'm loved by God. That means I have an inheritance in God. That means that I'm chosen by God. Put it, list it out. What does it mean? Don't get religious and cute. I am a man. I'm a person of integrity. Okay, what does that mean? Write it down. Got to look at it. Radical discipline. And then once I finish that, I've got my prayer that's written out every single day. Not just when I got to preach. Every day. Because I don't get to take a break from being me. And you don't get to take a break from being you. In fact, not only do you get to take, not get to take a break from being you, your whole job is to find out who you are. Radical disciplines. Taking care of your body. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, this is your, this is what you're, you're moving through the earth with. This is all you got. Take care of it. Pray. Get wise. Study it. Cut out stuff. You're like, uh, uh. too far, PT. Just stay in my spiritual life. Okay, but your spiritual life is walked out. In this, I'm not mad at you. We all can do better. But I'm talking about radical discipline because you're after something what I love about excellence is excellence is excellence when you become committed to excellence you can't stand anything that's not excellent it has a way of permeating the entirety of your existence God is excellent oh Lord oh Lord how excellent is your name I gotta let you go 
I just want to make sure I gave you everything that God wanted me to give you. I actually had a message in the last service. You can go back and listen to that. I, <laughs> scriptures and stuff like that. But I think you got the point, right? Yeah. <sighs> All right. I want to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I feel it. I thank you for this word. I believe it. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who had no sin all of mine, all of my weakness. All of my shortcomings, all of my pain, all of my hurt, all of my brokenness, all of my weakness, you placed in his body, nailed it to the cross, and put it to death. And as he rose up victorious from all those hard things, because I'm in him, I'm being raised up too. I'm forgetting what's behind me. I'm excited about what's in front of me. I will persevere. I will endure. And I will lay a hold of my inheritance. I will not quit. I will not faint. You're with me, in front of me, above me, behind me, underneath me. I'm surrounded by your grace. And therefore, I cannot fail. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May he lift up his countenance over you and grant you shalom, shalom in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. See you in a minute.